Hello and welcome to Leagues 4, Trailblazer Reloaded. My goals for this league are simple. Get as many points as possible while getting the Dragon Cup trophy, and then using league perks to solo Ohm in the Chambers of Zarek. Of course, the through line for the entire league is to have fun and get myself re-energized for the main game. For league progress, in terms of unlocking regions and relics, I unlock Production Prodigy for Tier 1. This was a tough choice because Trickster's in the game, and uh, while it was a hard choice, being able to process 28 items in a single action can lead to some astronomical experience rates. The plus 12 skills helped in early game, and the 25% chance to create an extra resource comes in very handy. For Tier 2, I had to go with Fairy's Flight. For all of the unique teleports, and huge for me, not needing the stupid Dramon staff. Tier 3 is the hotly contested relic tier, but I went with Fire Sail. If I had taken Trickster, I would have gone with Banker's Note, but I felt like there was more synergy between Fire Sail and Production Prodigy than there was with Banker's Note and Production Prodigy. Tier 4 was the combat relic, and I took the ranged relic, which I'll explain my reasons when I go over the regions I pick. Tier 5, I picked up the Treasure Hunter relic. This is because there's tons of points locked behind clues and clue items. Bloodthirsty wasn't really that great for points, and Infernal Tools just isn't needed because I took Production Prodigy, and that doesn't really help with any point tasks. Tier 6 is the only relic tier that I actually kind of regret my choice on. I picked up Equilibrium because as I was thinking, 50 million experience in each skill is worth an extraordinary 19,000 points. That includes level 99, 25 mil, 35 mil, and 50 million experience. However, I think the Farmer's Relic would have been a lot more fun to use since I ended up unlocking Seiya, and I didn't really care much for the Ruinous Powers. For tier 7, I picked up Soul Stealer. This is for the increased minimum hit, meaning I will never hit a 1, 2, or 3 when I hit, and I should never need to use prayer potions anywhere, and it should also keep my HP topped up plenty. It was between this and Zerker for me, since ZCB is my best in slot weapon, the Ruby Bolt specs are going to be where most of my damage comes from, and I can even heal from those hits. Tier 8 for me had to be Executioner's Axe because of that 20% culling effect, but the Guardian Relic was a pretty close second. For my regions, I unlocked Zaya first, which was definitely not the play. Getting points early on in Zaya was a lot harder than what my second region ended up being, which is the desert. For the first time in my entire time playing the game, I learned how to do the Sorcerer's Garden. That includes the one-click Summer Garden, but having played so much Hollowed Sepulcher in the main game, the movements of the garden clicked for me pretty quickly. The worst part is just having other people who didn't know what they were doing messing up the guards. My final region was Asgarnia, which has a ton of endgame boss tasks that end up giving me a ton of points. It's also a way for me to round out my off-style gear, and as a bonus that I really wasn't planning on, pest control is absolutely busted for combat and prayer experience, and ends up being really clutch for herbs as well. It's amazing how good this league feels, and how interesting it is to have so much more experience in endgame skilling and combat this time around to be able to take better advantage of the busted relics and if you're watching this after the league is over, then I hope you get a chance to take part in a future league. If you're watching this while the league is still going, jump on. It's still a lot of fun, and you've got time to do whatever you want. I've just completed enough tasks to be able to lock my first area, and we are going with Karend. I think Zaya has a lot to offer, and I'm going to be going Zaya Desert and Asgarnia. So we're going to start with Zaya. I think there's going to be a lot of easy tasks to complete here. And those easy tasks should let us unlock our second region really quickly. So let's teleport ourselves over there and get started. I've just completed enough points to be able to get my next relic and we are going with Fire Sail. I have a lot of cool ideas with Fire Sail and hopefully, eventually, once we, uh, once we unlock the farming guild, we can get construction and farming up to 99 super easy with those bag plants. Ooh, I can't wait to buy all the runes, too. It's time for the next relic. This one is the combat relic, and we are going Archer's Embrace. This means once I complete Wintertod, we'll be able to start on the Slayer grind as well. Enough tasks completed now that we can unlock our second region, and we are going to go into the desert. With Fire Sail, being able to get a bunch of crafting levels should be really easy. Plus, since I didn't take Trickster... We're gonna have to learn Sorceress Garden so we can get thieving up. Plus there's blackjacking, which will be our best thieving training. Kind of unfortunate, but uh, I made my choice. 
Thanks largely in part to Fire Sale, we have now unlocked our next relic, which took almost no time at all, and we are going to go with Treasure Seeker, because there's so many points behind clues. One hot minute later, we are unlocking the Tier 6 relic, and this time we're going to go with Equilibrium, because I there's so many points behind the experiences of skills that this just seems like a no-brainer. But I, I have Zaya, so I have a feeling I'm going to regret not taking farmers. But I'm in it for the long haul. We're going Equilibrium. Let's do this. I'm not really feeling too many of the effects from Equilibrium. Uh, I have to kind of just assume it's working in the background, but we do have enough tasks completed to unlock our third and final region, which is going to be Asgarnia, because there is just so many points behind those boss tasks. Plus, I'll be able to get Bandos, eventually Torva. Uh, it's really not Mage Gear, but the Staff of the Dead, so I guess that kind of is Mage Gear until I get a Shadow. I'm finally seeing the effects of Production Prodigy and Equilibrium like I thought they would work. Here using Bronze Bars, completing a full inventory of 26 items, and you get a fat XP drop or experience per hour is something like, what is it? Oh man, just over 3 mil an hour, that's so good. Here's another massive win for Production Prodigy, Equilibrium, and also in this case, Fire Sale. Look on the left there at that experience per hour. Also the total experience gained. We have, should have enough for 99 banked, but if not, I can just go get some more nice and easy. I have like 2.2 million taco left over, but just look, just look at the experience. There we go. Completing a Cal Fight Queen KC is going to be what unlocks me my seventh relic. And this one, I'm going to go with Soul Stealer. It just seems like the play i don't expect to ever have to use any prayer pots i could probably camp overheads and my damage prayers at the same time this just seems like a win for me here's one that i gotta give to the tricksters i have to do so much extra work just to mimic a fraction of their power i am still getting four million experience per hour here but it is it's a lot of work compared to just clicking once and afking for five minutes eh. It still works. It still works. I'm not coping. You're coping. I'm absolutely zooming through the fight caves now that I got Soul Stealer. And I'm trying to, let's see, tank it, hit off. Yep. Easy, easy, easy points. It barely even hit me. But anyway, trying to get the sub 26 minute for the Grandmaster Challenge because that's going to be a ton of points if I can get that. Wow, J Jad is already down. This, or there, one hit. There we go. Ooh, it's not that bad, especially for not having Zerker. It's actually a pretty good time. Since I have the final relic for minigame points, I decided to grand out all of MTA all at once, which was not that bad. I mean, it's still MTA, so it sucks, but here I am getting all the rewards except for some of the enchantment rewards because you actually can't hold enough points to be able to get everything. So I have to go back for a little bit more points. There's a lot of tasks right there, a lot of points, and there's a master for getting full infinity. And here we are with the last points that we need to be able to get full infinity. Get the hat, and then the top, and then the bottom. Wait. Hmm. It's more and more clear to me that I'm just bad at math sometimes. Oh, there it is. There's the full set, and master task completed for 400 points. Well, you know me, I like to save the best for last, so here we are with 10 points remaining, making some butter. Hmm, you worked that churn. <laughs> oh god, how long does this take? <laughs> the longest 10 point task, there it is. Tier 8 Relic, Executioner's Axe, and now we can play the game. Actually, now we can max. Ooh, big hit. 1kc Abyssal Needle? No way. Here we are about to get a fat cooking drop. What do we get? Holy. Oh my god, sit, doggy, sit. <laughs> that was so fast. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, 89, 89. Holy. Oh, 95, Oh my god, that kill was so fast. What did we get? <laughs> One quick raid with the boys, just for the achievement diary. And do we get a purple? No, but somebody gets a purple. What did they get? Oh, mega rare. Smithing is one of my last 99s, and this is actually the fastest method I have for smithing, being able to just buy bronze bars and smith them at almost max level. We're getting nearly 5 million experience an hour. Wow. 99, here we go. I am so happy that I picked Asgarnia because pest control has been absolutely clutch in my road to maxing, being able to get 99 magic, prayer, and combats in life just a couple of hours is just absolutely nutty and here at the end 99 herb lore it was absolutely clutch for getting those last couple herbs i mean one game is two herb packs which is like almost 20 herbs it's it's crazy okay look, real quick let's log off i, I want to see how much rank we have to max like how early we were to max in this competition of leagues yeah, right now, before we log out, we're at 176. After we log out, let's see, refresh the high scores, and we are 137 to max. That is, that's pretty good, especially because I didn't even try to go for max really early on. I was just playing how I always play the game, and yeah, we just kind of maxed quickly. <laughs> just, just playing the game normally. I did kind of push for it in the last, like, day or two, but... 13 days from league start there we go max to count and now uh, now i can get into doing some more like killing stuff to try to get loot and tasks and things just as i want to now let me get some money and we will head off to pick up the max cape because that is the only way i can get a range cape in the leagues because i have no access to Kandarin. I do have a lot of clues. I have 600 beginners, uh, some easies, mediums, etc. I was gonna run through a bunch of these and try to, you know, just have some fun. I think it'd be really neat to be able to do some of these clues finally and then get some other tasks done that I've just not been doing because they're too slow for the experience that I would need to max. It's so funny that I've gotten this. I'm already at like 430 million total experience. <laughs> I've almost matched my main game, Iron. I've gotten a lot of fletching experience because it's all zero time. And then what else? The farming has just been passive just from trying to get the herbs that I need for 99. Honestly, if I had any idea how fast pest control was, like it, I did that right there at the end, I probably wouldn't have done any farming at all because it's just, it's kind of insane. And then what else is super high? Uh, nothing really. Oh, I guess ranged. I have 60 million ranged experience. <laughs> 66 million. Anything else? I don't think so. I think most everything else is just base stats. I kind of want to see how much cooking experience I can get per hour. I think I'll buy like 20,000 or more Karambwans and just one tick them until they're all gone and see how much that gets me. My guess is like 50 million experience per hour, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, what the hell? Move out of the way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't actually think, I don't remember if I maxed in the last league. I'll have to go back and look. But it is, uh, it is really nice. I, I'm pretty sure I maxed in the last league. Either way, 
There we go. We're not going to go through all the all the rigmarole. Max cape looking good. Let's take a screenshot. Send that to the clan because there is a bounty on first to max. And honestly, I'm first 130, 140 to max. That's pretty cool. I think I'm technically like 150 ish to max, but I had more experience than the other people. Honestly, with cooking and crafting, I could easily get in the top 100, but I don't think I care too much. Honestly, I didn't really pick the relics or the leagues. Like, if we look at my relics right now, Banker's Note, I think you could probably argue Fire Sale was the faster to max. Production Prodigy, um, I've seen some pretty cool synergy with Trickster being able to max by taking, like, Tyronwyn, but eh. Uh, what else would have been better? Blood, the Treasure Seeker was absolutely terrible for maxing. Bloodthirsty or Infernal Gathering would have been better there. Equilibrium is not better for maxing because some of the slowest ones was like Herblore, of course. But Equilibrium was pretty good. And then Berserker would have been better for maxing as well. And then I think Guardian would have been better for maxing. But these are better for what I'm going for. And that's what is important to me. I think if there's another league... Uh, I think I'll just make it my goal to max because I really like skilling. I like trying to max. I like doing those things. So next league, since I won't need the league to learn content, I'm just going to make it my goal to be like maybe top page to max because I think that's actually doable if I pick the right path. I think I, I didn't have really a, a plan going into this. And I definitely didn't plan to max this quickly. I just That's just how I play. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.